Good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. How are you all doing? We have Manuel, we have Phil. Good to see you back, Phil. Rita, Paul, Alexander. Yep, you're all joining, you're all joining. Lovely, wonderful, guys. Wonderful, wonderful. Glad to see everyone here today. Glad to see everyone here. I'm literally just going to... As I always do, I'm going to give a minute or so for those that are kind of creeping in a little bit late. Um, Paul, you've got some strange stuff happening on the screen there. Um, not sure if your camera's not working. I'll stop the video for you. There we go, there we go. So is everyone feeling good today? Give me a thumbs up if feeling good. Those who I can't see, utilize the chat box. Drop a yes in the chat box. Let me know. Great to see that, Phil. Drop a yes in the chat box if you're feeling good. Oh, Manuel, you're always feeling top, sir. That's not a surprise to me. Rita, lovely to see, lovely to see. Okay, wonderful. As I said, literally just a minute for those that are dropping in slightly later. And then we get started. Got some interesting stuff to talk about today, guys. Some stuff that... Yeah, it's kind of touching me. And I'll break it down for you all. Stress is something that has and can have an incredible, incredible uh, issue. There you go, Paul. Your video's back on. Stress is something that can have an incredible issue on your body. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Uh, I was speaking to my nephew today and my nephew's just come out of hospital he had meningitis which is extremely serious and life threatening as an adult and the reason why I kind of refer that back to stress is I lost my mum on the 23rd of August last year 2018 or 2017 even apologies that's obviously my nephew's gran. And he went through a few things back end of last year and some things were kind of stressing him a little bit this year. And then 23rd of August this year, one year to the day, he lost his other gran. And she was someone that was very, very dear to his heart. She raised him almost like a mother. And that rocked him to the core and as well as going through day-to-day -day life and the other stresses he was going through and experiencing, that will cause a massive issue. And then, as you said, nearly three weeks now, he's been in a hospital with meningitis, which is a bacterial or a viral infection. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, okay, that can happen to anyone. But the reason why I mention this is simple. That I personally believe that stress is the biggest cause of any illness. Stress will find the weak point in your body and it will take advantage. That's why I'm talking about this today because in life, as you all know, we have choices. We can either react to a situation or respond to a situation. And when we choose how we're gonna respond, we maintain a level of control. But when we become emotionally involved and we allow stress to dictate how we're gonna respond in a situation, that in itself can have a massive, massive impact Stress, in my opinion, is the number one killer. They may attach other illnesses, but ultimately stress is what is the cause. It finds the weak spot. And for me, we have to maintain that level of control. Rich, I know you've been through the wars when it comes to illnesses, so you can probably relate. 
that stress is absolutely something that will attract illness to you. Now, none of us choose to be ill. It would be crazy to say that. But we all have the power to choose how we do with day-to-day -day situations. And being stressed and allowing stress to take over our minds is not the way forward. And I'll explain because if we break things down in the simplest of forms, ultimately, one, no matter what you're going through, there's always someone that's going through something worse and you always have something to be grateful for. Always, no matter how small it may be. And two, as long as you've got a roof over your head and food on your table, life can't be that bad, right? But I think we all get caught up in the day-to-day -day living and we allow, as I said, external influences to dictate how we feel. That's why for me, it was so, so important to touch on stress today and the fact that we have to choose to manage that. Stress and depression are very, very closely linked. And I'm sure you can understand why, because when you go into a state of stress, you can only see all of the problems you're going through. And depression lives where problems do. But it's quite simple, guys. When you focus on gratitude, I'll give you a simple fact. Gratitude and depression can't live in the same body. Gratitude and depression cannot live in the same body. So if you focus on gratitude, that is the receipt of you taking on board good things. And the way the universe operates, as you focus on gratitude, the universe will bless you with more things to be grateful for. That's how life works. That's how universal laws work. So ultimately, we have to be the dictators as to how we respond and how we allow life to move forward. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there and help you understand that we all have a choice. But what I really wanted to talk to you guys today about was self-discipline. Phil, good morning, sir. I'm going to just, Phil, if you can take yourself off mute briefly, I just want to ask a simple question. Good morning, yes. sir. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm um, fantastic, Phil. Thank you for asking. Phil, what does self-discipline mean to you, sir? <laughs> Since I don't have any, uh, probably I'm getting sure things do. done. Go ahead. Getting things done. Okay. And following yeah. a plan. Okay. Okay. So getting things done, following a plan. Um, does it mean anything else, or is that kind of sum it up for you? Well, probably uh, for me, it would uh, it would probably give me less stress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I if I did do it. So kind of structure as well, then, right? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate Good your buddy. feedback. Thank you, Paul. You're new to the call. Good morning, sir. Paul, if you can pop yourself off from you, bottom left hand corner. Good morning, Paul. How you doing, sir? Good yourself. Yeah, absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. Welcome to the call, I know you're new here. So Paul, please tell me, in your own words, what does discipline mean to you, sir? Self-discipline. Self-discipline? Uh, making a plan and working your plan. Okay, okay. Get a mindset. Yep. Anything else, sir? Or is that kind of your assessment? Uh, it, I, uh, I uh, discipline myself, I dedicate an hour to this, or two hours to that, and accomplish it, go on to the next task. Yep. And uh, thank you for work. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. I appreciate it, Paul. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. 
Guys, we've had some breakdowns of what self-discipline means to the individuals. And we've probably all got our own slight variation and our slight change on what self-discipline. But for me, self-discipline really means getting things done. As Paul Wembo Phil said, sticking to a plan. But what I like to do is take the toughest tasks and do those first. The things that are the ones that you can tend to easily procrastinate over because they are challenging they're the ones I like to address and attack first. And self-discipline, as well as having a routine and a plan, it is being consistent with your actions. Because if we, to be fair, consistency will beat talent every single day if talent doesn't work hard. So we have to be disciplined, we have to be consistent, we have to do the tasks that we don't really always love doing, but they need to get done. There's always things in business that you might not, beautiful way to make a list of priorities, absolutely. There's always things in business that you might not enjoy doing. So you've got two choices. You either choose to do them first and have that victory, or you delegate for someone else to do. Because you always hear people talking about work with your strengths and improve your weaknesses. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that. I personally prefer to home in on my strengths, put all of my focus and energy on my strengths so I make my strengths great and outsource my weaknesses. Because the things that are I consider weaknesses, someone else will consider them a strength. And that's why you collaborate. That's why you have a team. No man is an island. Remember this, guys. And how do we turn good into great? Through consistency. By doing something good every single day, you will ultimately move from good to great. These are all simple things, but they all require discipline. Discipline isn't always something that we take control of, but we have to, especially in business. For example, in business, you have to know your numbers and you have to be disciplined around your routines. Rita made a great point, make a list of priorities. That for me is a great way to achieve what you want to get done. You hear a lot of people talk about, <laughs> you wanted to be an island, right, Phil? <laughs> no man is an island, my friend. Invoke a team. When you've got a team, sometimes the issue is we want to maintain control. Am I right? And you can maintain control. But what you have to remember, if you cannot give away some of the tasks, you end up getting bogged down because you want to do everything yourself. And that's not how a business operates. That's how a man who's self-employed operates. And you have to understand if you're self-employed, all you do is you own your job. And a lot of the time, self-employed people, they get paid last. Who wants to own a job? You know? You think that it gives you more freedom. When in actual fact, usually when you're self-employed, you work a lot harder because it's for yourself than you would for any employer. But as I said, that's not how a business operates. You need to delegate tasks. You need to be resourceful with people around you. You need to hire people that can do things to take some of the weight off of you. 
But moving back to priorities, the reason why that is also very important to me is because a lot of people talk about time management, which once again is another fallacy. And the reason why I say that, how do you manage time? Because from my experience, a manager usually delegates and usually gives orders and usually manages over things. So let's say I'm going to manage time. I'm going to say time. I've got a lot on my plate this week. So I'd prefer if you run on half time so I can get it all done. Then at the end of the week, I'm going on a holiday. So I would want to continue on half time. Then when I come back, I've got some, uh, I've got some things I don't really want to do. So I want you to double up on time just so they'll get those things out of the way quickly. Do you think time's going to pay any attention at all? Time's going to run on its own time because it always does. Time waits for no man. Therefore, you can't manage time. All you can do is manage your priorities, which is why you create a list of the things that you need to get done and you prioritize those things that are important to you. But also with regards to discipline, do you believe that successful people get up and they start their days by accident? No, they're disciplined and they plan their days. Me personally, I want you guys to help to, to understand something. The first hour of the day is my hour. I do not, I repeat, I do not use or touch any electronic devices. No cell phone, no laptop, no iPad, definitely no TV. I don't interact with any of those things in the first hour of my day because you then start operating on someone else's time. Other people get to influence what you're doing. So I'm very, very disciplined with my time in the first hour. And also the last hour of the day. I use the last hour of the day to assess how I believe I performed for that day and also plan for the next day. And when I say assess how I believe I performed, I believe in being brutally honest because you have to be brutally honest with yourself. That's the only way you grow. I will mark myself on a scale of zero to 10, zero being absolutely terrible, 10 being I've had an incredible day. And if I've had a seven out of 10, that's okay. However, what could I have done to make it a 10? What would I have needed to change in order to make the day exceptional? That's why it's important to be brutally honest with yourself. But as I said, it's important to, for me, to have those hours at the end of each day, one at the beginning, one at the end. And I remain disciplined throughout. And also disciplined with what I allow to penetrate my mind. I'm going to make a statement and some people believe it's absurd. I rarely watch television. Rarely. And there's reason to my rationale. That square box in front of you, I call it the tell lie vision because it tells lies to your eyes. Do you think it's a coincidence that the things on the television are called programs? <laughs> of course it's not. There are so many subliminal messages that are passed through these programs. And it's easy to penetrate your unconscious mind when you're in that state watching television. Give me a thumbs up guys, if you've ever been watching television, watching a movie and you've got someone beside you and they're talking to you and you actually don't hear a word of what they say. Give me a thumbs up if that's happened before. Give me a yes in the chat box if you guys have happened, if that's happened to you before. The reason being, you kind of go into that almost hypnotic state when you're watching television. And at that point, it's very, very easy to penetrate your unconscious mind. And your unconscious mind is what runs your body. It's what dictates your life. It's what helps you create your future. Which is why I'm very, very selective about what I do watch. If I 
watch the television. It's generally a film of my choice because everyone needs some downtime, right? But one of the things I absolutely do not watch is the news. I don't watch the news. And why do you think I don't watch the news? Because when's the last time you saw good news on the news? Rarely, right? Do you not think that the news and the media in general are controlled? They distribute information that they want you to feed into, that they want you to buy into. And for me personally, I don't need that kind of information. Some people might think, well, well how are you going to be aware of what's going on in the world? Quite simply, if there's a major world event, it's going to be a topic of conversation, am I right? So in which case, do you not think that people are going to be talking about it? So I'm going to hear about it regardless. And just because I don't watch the news, it doesn't mean as I, I live in a, a black hole and I'm oblivious to what's going on. No, you understand what's going on in the world. You hear general topics, but I just don't feed into what's going on. Ah, uh, there you go. Rita, you're on point today. If you strip away the picture, you can feel the words that are being fed into your brain. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But as I said, guys, we have to be disciplined about what we do. Learning is something we have to continuously do. We have to continuously evolve and take on board fresh information. The reason being, when we're disciplined about learning, what that does, that activates our brain and it keeps our minds young. You don't take on board information and you start to slowly die. Your mind is like a muscle. And if you don't use it, if you don't allow new information to penetrate, you lose the ability. It's very, very important to continuously learn. Give me a thumbs up and a yes in the chat box if you guys believe heavily in self-development. If you are continually developing yourself, if you are continually learning. Thank you, guys. That's critical. The reason why that's critical is that's where growth comes from. You have to become comfortable being uncomfortable because growth doesn't happen in your comfort zone. Growth doesn't happen where you're sitting down all nice and cozy. Growth happens when you make yourself uncomfortable. And as an entrepreneur, you have to become uncomfortable because you're the thought leader of your business. You're the one who has to keep your ship navigating on the right course. And as they say, a great sailor was never made on smooth seas. So you have to be able to take the rough with the smooth. But as an entrepreneur, you have to be consistently, continuously learning. And these may seem like very simple, very logical, very straightforward things that I'm suggesting. But all too often we forget the simple things. All too often we become absorbed in what's going on right in front of us. When in actual fact, and oftentimes you have to take a step back and look at the big picture. You have to take that helicopter view so you can really see the landscape. I know my friend Manuel has a, a great ability to do this. My correct Manuel, give me a yes in the chat box, my friend. Because when you grow a business, when you achieve a level of success, you have to be able to have that vision and that understanding of where you're going. You have to have direction. All of these things are critically important. There you go, Manuel, the virgin view, absolutely. And what Manuel, Manuel means by that is, when you're new to something, 
sometimes you can see things a lot clearer than the people that have been immersed in that business for a long time. You come with a fresh perspective. And guys, you have to remember, perspective is simply taking the frame and sometimes shifting it. You shift the frame, you get a different view, am I right? And when you get a different view, you often get a different perspective. You see things from a different angle, which allows you then to have a different thought process about how you can resolve or solve the situation or even grow your business. These things are massively important because ultimately, if you're not progressing, you're regressing. If you're not staying on course, if you're not tending to move forward, what happens is you stagnate. Your business falls in decline. And at that point, you're playing catch up. You're fighting hard to stay ahead of the game. Business is about having foresight, about understand where your marketplace is going, where the potential changes are. You have to see this ahead of time and you have to stay ahead of time. For example, Toys R Us, they fell away to the wayside simply because they didn't stay with, t they, they didn't stay with the advancements. From my understanding, Toys R Us started to allow Amazon to do their deliveries for them. So if you're allowing Amazon to do your deliveries, why do we need Toys R Us? Amazon started stocking those products. Toys R Us didn't stay abreast of the game. So they went out of business. And that happens to many big corporations that don't stay ahead of time. They don't watch the changes. You have to be two, three steps ahead of where you are. And all of this ties into being disciplined. Discipline will help you stave away complacency. And complacency, I promise you, my friends, is your biggest and your worst enemy in business. Give me a thumbs up if this is resonating, if this will make sense. Give me a yes in the chat box if this is all really making sense for you. Complacency is something that will slowly kill your business. But it would also slowly start to eat away at your own mind. The reason being, when you become complacent, you become comfortable. And at that point, your competition will seize the day and move ahead. It is your duty as an entrepreneur to remain disciplined, remain focused, and stay focused. For me, focus is an acronym I love. Follow on course until successful. That's what focus means to me. I'll repeat that again. Follow on course until successful. Because there are gonna be things that want you to deviate. There are gonna be things that wanna push you off course, that wanna cause blockages. All of these things for me are challenges to see how badly you want to achieve what you want to achieve. When you have a goal, when you have an outcome that you're searching for, you have to remain diligent. You have to remain on the ball. And you have to remain focused. Because your goal if it's big enough, will test every last fiber of your body. Because for me personally, if my goal doesn't scare me, I'm not thinking big enough. You have to get into that mindset of anything is possible. What do Audrey Hepburn say? The word impossible, you break it down, it actually says I'm possible. Impossible is just a mindset, guys. Everything is impossible until it's done once. And then all of a sudden, everyone's doing it. Do you remember when they were talking about 
it's impossible to run the four minute mile. Roger Bannister, an English gentleman, broke the four minute mile. And then I believe within the same year, many people then broke the four minute mile. Things are only impossible until someone does it. And as I said, impossible is simply a mindset. Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe you can achieve what you want? Because if you have that level of belief, understand guys, anything is possible. And how is it generally achieved? All can and will be achieved one step at a time. I'm committed to you guys. How committed are you to yourselves? That's the question I always like to ask. Guys, these 30 minutes always seems to whiz by. I really can't understand how time seems to tick by so quickly. But as we understand, it waits for no man. Remember, all can and will be achieved one step at a time, guys. And if you're prepared to commit, I'll be here on the same bad channel tomorrow. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for, for your energy. You didn't have to be here. You chose to be here. I appreciate that. And as I said, I'll see you, to, see you back here on the same bad channel tomorrow. Thank you guys. Take care. Make today count. Have an incredible day. Thank you.